The Media Dialogues, Vision 2020. The only question today on everyone's mind is how much of India will reopen for business and life after May 3rd. Many states say extending the lockdown will help them battle the pandemic, especially in the hot spots. In Mumbai, that closed before the rest of the country and is reporting the highest number of cases and deaths, the lockdown may well continue beyond May 3rd. And that's a headline no one, least of all the newspapers, will like. In the commercial capital and in many other places, despite being an essential service and putting out news every day and digitally also, newspapers have mostly disappeared. I have haven't seen one in over a month. Now, is this going to be a body blow for traditional print media whose share of the ad pie has been shrinking already? How effectively will publishers be able to monetize digital readership? I'm going to put all those questions to Girish Agarwal. He's the director of DB Corp that publishes 66 editions in three languages across 12 states. Dainik Bhaskar, Divya Bhaskar, Divya Marathi are its flagship brands and the company employs 10,000 people, including 2,700 journalists. Girish Agarwal, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to have you talk about your business and the sector. Thank you for having me. So the first question, Girish, let's start with the fears that people have expressed about newspapers. Everything that comes into the home from outside is suspect and newspapers are on that list. Have publishers like you uh, across the country managed to do enough to address these fears? Should we believe that newspapers are germ and virus free? Let me first of all clarify to you that uh, you haven't seen a newspaper from the past one month because you live in a particular city, a particular area of Mumbai or maybe some part in Delhi. But in the rest of the country, newspapers are publishing and distributing as usual in all the possible homes. Yeah, for example, in Kerala, almost 95% of the newspapers which are regularly published are getting delivered. Similarly, in Madhya Pradesh or Rajasthan, we are at almost 75-80% number. So the 20% copies which are currently on hold are because of the offices are shut, the shops are shut, the airports are shut, railway stations, and the small towns where we used to use the uh, railway network to supply our copies. That's not being done. So otherwise, in most of the states in the country, almost 80-85% newspapers are being delivered and distributed. And uh, I, unfortunately, you live in Bombay, so hence you may not be able to see your physical copy of a newspaper. So you're saying at this point of time, for a group like DB Corp and the 12 states you operate out of, you're seeing a drop of just 20% in terms of the copies you're printing? Yes, very much. And also, let me address your point about the newspaper carrying the virus. WHO clarified that newspaper doesn't carry any such virus. And apart from that, also all the newspapers countrywide are making sure that our plants are sanitized, our entire process is untouched, and we are further distributing masks and the gloves to our vendors to ensure that even a remote possibility of, doesn't, of the virus doesn't come through newspapers. Help me understand, why is it that Mumbai and parts of Delhi and parts of Mumbai are behaving differently from the other places that your papers are going out to? What is different in people's behavior and consumer mindset in these two places or regions? So what happened in Mumbai and uh, for example, I live in Worli in Mumbai and I'm getting my paper every day. But in lots of the people places in Mumbai where people live in the large housing societies, the societies don't allow anybody to come in. You know, whether it's your uh, vegetable vendor or your bread guy or anybody, he's supposed to leave their stuff outside. So same is for the newspapers also. They're, they're not allowing anybody to come in in Mumbai or in some part of Delhi. But in rest of the India, people live in their houses or very small housing societies, you know. So over there, there is no such issue at all. And Coming you're saying those people don't even fear that the paper may carry the virus like anything else from outside, plastic bags no, and cardboard boxes. WHO clarified that newspaper doesn't carry any virus. What about Maharashtra? Because we know that the government in Maharashtra has actually said that the newspapers may be carriers of the virus. Even as I speak to you, we know that two benches of the Bombay High Court are listening to different petitions, uh, you know, uh, on this subject. So the decision taken by Maharashtra government is only for the hotspots uh, and the red zones in Maharashtra. For example, in Aurangabad or Jalgaon or Sholapur, Kolapur, Nagpur, the newspaper are being distributed every day. Give me a sense of how this will play out once the lockdown 
lifts because you're from what you're saying and the experience at DB Corp and the newspapers you run you're saying that it is pretty much business as usual when it comes to the newspaper business see it, there are two aspects of us one is the circulation where we distribute uh, the copies uh, print the news so that's business almost as usual second half is the advertising part of it which, yeah. is, which is our uh, bloodline you know uh, uh, now the problem for us is that advertising is dependent on the overall economy so if the economy is suffering or going to stay locked down for a while more then we will be the sufferer along with that we are speaking today in a post covid world but even the pre covid world you were facing challenges on the advertising revenue front isn't it yeah so uh, for example the overall industry was at almost at 1 or 2% growth but the indian language newspapers hindi gujarati marathi telugu tamil whatever indian languages are they were still doing better on a on a higher single digit give me a sense of uh, what it will be like going forward on the ad revenue front because uh, big advertisers who've been holding back on advertising uh, small businesses that are dealing with cash flow cash, cash flow problems and staying in the business or staying you know uh, continuing to be up and running what are they going to behave like as advertisers what is the behavior you expect to see So let me first take you to their business behavior, and then we'll come to the advertising. Sure. So what happened? If you are running a two-wheeler company, you know that anyway, eighty eighty-five percent of your business comes from non-metro cities. Okay, the so-called tier two, tier three cities in India. You know. So what is going to happen? That once the market opens up, you will ensure that you put all your thrust, all your efforts in those markets to ensure that your sales come back to normal. You know. at the same time if you are into fmcg business or any other business you will have to be mentally prepared that the metros are going to be shut for a while for two reasons number one most of them are hot spot number two the consumer behavior in metro is much more different than the consumer behavior in the tier 2 and tier 3 and tier 4 cities so in my expectation what i have been talking to a lot of uh, marketers sure. that the tier 2 3 4 will open up much faster will come back to the track for consumption much faster then the metros what about local business advertising what about local advertising how will that behave you think so i think what we have seen in the past also local business come back much faster much faster because local people have the local pulse you know and advertising for them is not the branding advertising for them is all about today's sale sure. so if if, if i am running a coaching institute in in a particular market it's tactical really exactly very tactical that way i think uh, the local business or the smaller business will be much faster to come back right uh, girish let's spend some time talking about how digital has performed or has behaved in the in you know in these covid times because uh, everybody is talking about how digital readership has gone up uh, but is are you able to monetize that are news publishers able to monetize digital readership so let's again take it into two half one is how the numbers behave and second is the monetization part so as for the number is concerned i think we have seen 150% jump on the traffic coming to our websites on on our apps also because what is happening a person is reading a newspaper in the morning and he is actually very curious to know every 2 hours that what is happening country wide what is the number in the city of the corona it is it has like almost become like a you know like a one day cricket match that people want to know the score every 2 hours hmm. you know what's happening to mumbai hmm. what's happening this place says how many people got affected and how many people any people got got uh, got out of the disease also because right. a lot of people are suffering you know so that's about that and that's the reason why the digital viewership or readership of most of the publications have gone up we have seen a growth of almost 150% in last one month's time coming to the monetization i think monetization is still slightly far away for simple reason because today we all are focusing on capturing the numbers so more and more people would come on to my website my app and read my newspaper get used to it over a period of time that he believe that okay i'll read a physical paper in the morning and i'm going to get the update through the app during the day that's what we are looking at and maybe after a couple of months or maybe a year or two we can talk about monetization So Girish you've studied advertiser mindsets very closely that's you know that is your job and I want to understand why is it that advertisers haven't valued the digital audiences that newspapers and news publishers are delivering uh, vis-a-vis the 
paper readers that uh, newspapers deliver? You know, there are enough uh, books on marketing talk about how to learn from somebody's mistake. You know, so these kind of behavior will go into the, those kind of book going forward. So you're saying the advertisers are making a mistake at this point of time by not valuing. I'm not, the... I'm not saying anything. I'm simply saying that there are enough books. So this could be one of the book going forward. We've been seeing a lot of people reading PDFs in the last few uh, in the last few days, downloading PDFs, reading PDFs. Do you see PDFs allowing you to use the subscription model? Have paywalls been challenging to implement in India in the publishing world? So I'm talking about direct subscription revenues. I want you to address that a little bit. I think people are more interested, not in PDF, but in the daily updation of the hourly updation, every minute updation of the news. You are talking about PDF because unfortunately in Mumbai, in your society, you're not able to get the newspaper. Right. And hence you want to see the PDF that what happened in the today's morning newspaper. But think of a guy who's living in Jaipur or in Jodhpur or Ahmedabad or Surat or Barada or Kanpur. He anyway saw his morning paper. So he need not to look for the PDF sure. anymore. What he wants the updation. But what about paywalls for the website? I think still we have, we, we need to wait for a couple of years more when we can talk about the paid version of any any news format in India. So, you know, we've seen cover prices of newspapers. Uh, that's something that is pretty, held pretty sacrosanct. In fact, when launches happen in new cities or towns, that's actually, uh, that cover price does go down sometimes as launch prices. Now, is it, what is your reading of the Indian reader of the Indian consumer when it comes to news information does do is it a challenge to get Indian readers to pay for news not at all uh, let me just give you a perspective today uh, average Indian reader is paying almost 130 to 150 rupees a month for subscribing a newspaper that's the cost of subscribing to a large bouquet of a, of a TV channel you know so it's not that he wants to buy a newspaper for, for 60, 80 rupees. He's paying 120, 250 rupees a month. In a couple of states, he's paying 210 rupees also a month. So I don't think news reader is shy of paying a good value for, for the right kind of news. And that's the reason why we all believe that post-COVID, there'll be a scope for all the newspaper to increase the price by another 10, 15 percent. Okay. And uh, what about advertisers on newspapers? I know you have talked about this, but I do want to understand why is it that advertisers are not able to see um, rates on digital advertising the way they would see for paper ads? So again, what is happening when they look at newspaper, they look at an engagement over there. Now, when they look at digital, they consider that more as a commodity that how can I get an eyeball, whether I'm getting an eyeball from X, Y, or Z. Sure. You know, I think going forward, that acknowledgement will come in the advertiser that they are not looking for any eyeball. They're looking for an involved, mature eyeball. And that you can get from more credible uh, source. And do you, do, you thing, see, do you see the COVID experience or do you see this COVID disruption that has happened as contributing to this change in mindset of advertisers when it comes to digital readership? Certainly, yes. Certainly, yes. Uh, you know, it's going to change. Also, please understand, uh, one, one huge advantage has come to print media during this time of COVID is about the trust, the credibility, you know. Newspapers are all about trust and credibility because of the format of a newspaper. You know, for example, a journalist files a story at six in the evening. Uh, there's enough time because we are a 24 hour cycle, sure. enough time for the sub editor and editor to read the story, check the story and ask for a source. Right. You know, unless you get a source, you don't publish it. But what happened in a social media or any other media format that way, a news comes and it just goes out. And later on, you realize that was a fake news, you know. I think one huge advantage has come to the print media that the whole credibility aspect, which was always with the print media, has further been uh, enlightened by a lot of people, enhanced by, by uh, knowledge by a lot of people that they acknowledge that, yes, a print media stands for the credibility. So you don't see what is happening today, this disruption that we are experiencing and that your business is experiencing as a as a threat, an existential threat for the business. In fact, you see it as an opportunity for print media. Let me give you, uh, uh, you know, a, a more philosophical answer to this. Okay. Uh, 
you know, in our Indian mythology, we talk about Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. We say Brahma, who is a creator, Vishnu, who is a preserver, and Mahesh, Shiva, is a destroyer. And we all have read this enough, and we all say that, no, in business, at times, we need to be a destroyer ourselves to, to destroy certain things which have been lying there as a legacy for the last 20, 30 years. I guess this is the time that you've been forced, the destruction has been already happened. So now you need to know that you need to become Brahma to create it again and then talk about preserving the whole thing. So I think in this destruction, people, the entrepreneurs especially, sure. are looking at that how we can be back onto the role of Brahma and to start creating something again. So give us an insight into how you at DB Corp, how your teams are looking at the, how can you reimagine this business and the business model? What, in what direction are you all thinking? So I believe the very first thing going forward may happen that in this industry, some kind of consolidation may happen. You know, generally newspapers, if you notice in the last 30, 40 years time, there's hardly been any consolidation in their newspapers. Yes. You know, so I guess maybe going forward, this may happen that there'll be some kind of uh, consolidation will happen in this industry. Also, the way newspapers are currently structured, you know, they are changing themselves a lot. We have seen ourselves as an organization in the last one month's time, the kind of changes we have done in a reporting format, the kind of, for example, the earlier the story length used to be 600, 800 uh, words also. Now it has gone down to 250, 350 words because we are realizing that the person who's sitting at home is spending more time and he has more time. So he's spending more time on reading newspaper, but at the same time, he wants much more to know. Right. You know? So you say, okay, instead of giving him a 600 word, 800 word story or a write up, reduce the length and give him more numbers of the story. Talk about the whole world. Now, this is the time when people also want to know that what is happening in Italy and Germany and Spain and UK, because they believe that this is the whole thing is now a truly global world because something happens in China goes to U.S. and goes and all, all the, the entire world. Yeah. And we all thought that U.S. being what U.S. is would be able to handle the situation much, much better. But unfortunately not. So I think reader wants to know everything possible this time. And also one thing I must, I must uh, bring uh, to the knowledge that the way the medical people, the host doctors and the nurses are serving the nation, the policemen are really going out and really doing a lot of work work to save the society, I guess the media people are doing the same job. Follow up question on that point you made about consolidation going forward. Uh, is that something you see DB Corp, you're a listed company, uh, you know, do you see yourself uh, looking at acquisitions? And is there, is there enough in this market to buy for large companies that are looking to acquire? Okay, let me put it this way that is there enough to acquire Yes, there is decent numbers to be acquired, hmm. you know, but will they be ready to get acquiring? I doubt, but there's no harm trying. <laughs> why, why is there resistance for, why do people who start newspapers somehow want to keep newspapers? Is it because they're vanity projects? It's, is it because, you know, we've talked earlier about the kind of influence and power that newspapers can wield? Yes, uh, it, 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 uh, two things. First of all, newspaper is not a very capital intensive business, especially if you are an old player in the market, you launched the newspaper some 15, 20 years back, there's hardly any capex, uh, you know, currently required. Uh, second thing, as you mentioned, that newspaper does bring a uh, lot of influence along with that, the social status and all that. A lot of people uh, want to keep that uh, with them. But maybe in the post-COVID world, you never know. You never know. It's an opportunity. Uh, Girish, you talked about how the way you're presenting news is changing, how newsrooms and their operations are changing uh, in these past few months also. Uh, give me a sense of how you're looking at employee strength because every, almost every single big newspaper, traditional media house has announced pay cuts, has announced, some of them have announced small layoffs. Digital-only outlets have also announced layoffs. What is the experience at DB Corp? Because we've just talked about the kind of employee strength that you have. So we are not looking at any major layoff. Maybe going But you forward, are looking at layoffs, that means. Yeah, we are not looking for any layoff. Okay. And uh, maybe going forward, maybe 1-2% people, those who are 
not being able to fit in the system and company been thinking about that for long, maybe we will take a call on them. But we are not looking for any large number layoff at all. And also we have not announced any salary cut, but we have, we have announced that some portion of the salary uh, may get attached to the company's link to the company's EBITDA. If the company perform, performs well, that portion uh, of the particular percentage of salary uh, will also be paid back to the to the employees. Quick word on the kind of uh, government relief or measures you would expect from the government to help the business. People in the m and &E or media and entertainment space have uh, made put forward proposals and recommendations. You want to give me a sense of, uh, besides raising advertising rates and increasing advertising by government itself, is there anything else government can do? Frankly speaking, uh, there's hardly anything uh, media industry is dependent on government, hardly anything, except one small 5% duty on the imported newsprint, and we have requested government to bring it down. But I guess I'll be more keen to see government providing packages, the, the relief packages, incentive packages to the other industries, to the automobile industry, to the pharma right. industry, to the FMCG industry, because if those industries will start doing well, sure. you know, the advertising will come to me, and that will be an indirect relief to me. How dependent are newspapers uh, still on government advertising? Because one of the big asks is, please advertise more. So, uh, depends from organization to organization, but ranging from 10% to 25%. That's the kind of advertising percentage which a newspaper organization gets from the government. DB Corp also has My FM, uh, which is the radio brand. Uh, give me a sense of how radio has been impacted uh, post-COVID. So radio has got mixed basket. There are families, those who are listening to the radio sitting at home also. And there are one, those who are not. Uh, because earlier people used to listen to the radio through the car, in their, in their car, and at times also from their phone and sitting at home also. So I think right now we're experiencing a mixed basket because some people, those who are sitting at home and some, some time they want to download a particular radio channel and they are able to listen to that, they can do that. But because of the privacy issue, a lot of people are not even doing that also. Is it a that more challenging it. scenario for FM stations? It is. It is indeed because of the advertising. Yeah. Because they, and, but good thing what is happening in radio is trying to do some update on the COVID news. You now they are updating you about the basic numbers of the COVID news every now and then. So I think that's one area where people are still listening to them to find out what is happening? You know, experiences like COVID-19 are never before experiences for almost everybody living today. Uh, anything that it has brought to light for you, how has it made you reassess how you see business, how you see life? We all are under the shock still. And we are right now, everybody is focused on the 3rd of May. They let the lockdown get over. And then we'll come to the real world to see what has been the real impact of, of lockdown and the COVID. How the business is going to behave going forward, which all businesses will survive and how they will grow furthermore. I think it's too early to comment on that. Okay, Girish, thank you very much for talking to us. I wish you and your entire team at DB Corp a lot of good luck. Stay safe and thank we'll you. talk again once the lockdown lifts so we can assess how this business is going to do, how the sector is going to do going forward. Thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you, Girish. And thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for another edition of the Media Dialogues next week. And stay tuned to CNBC TV 18, where all that information flow about the post-COVID-19 world is coming in thick and fast for expert analysis and reportage. The Media Dialogues, Vision 2020.